Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to a Photo Joseph live show. This is the first real live show that I've done in a really, really long time. Let's get into the extreme detailed differences between the ATIM mini lineup and the YOLO box lineup. Now there's two YOLO boxes. There's the YOLO box and the YOLO box pro. On the ATEM side, there's a lot, right? You start with the ATEM mini, ATEM mini pro, ATEM mini pro ISO, ATEM mini extreme, and then ATEM mini extreme ISO. Those are, that's the lineup. We're not gonna go comparing every single model, but you'll see here in just a moment what we are comparing. And I think it's gonna be a very fair comparison price and everything else wise. So let's go ahead and just dive into this. You're basically again, looking at the same spreadsheet on that webpage if you've pulled it up. If you look down here, you'll see a bunch of categories that I'm gonna be going through. Hardware, setup, outputs, power, inputs, media and effects, audio, recording, streaming, device control and external hardware. So those are all the categories we're gonna be going through. Yes, it's gonna be a lot, so let's just get into it, shall we? So starting off with hardware. First, let's talk about, actually, even before I open that, let's look at this top line here, and you can see what I'm comparing. So you've got the YOLO Box, YOLO Box Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO, and ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. And these two ATEMs are the two tops of their end, and then, of course, the two YOLO Boxes. And the price comparison is very equivalent, so that's why we're comparing these and not cheaper ATEMs. So the YOLO box is 750, the ATEM Mini Pro ISO is 795, US dollars of course, the YOLO box Pro is 1200, and the ATEM Mini uh, Extreme ISO is also 1200. So we have very similar pricing there, so I think it's a very fair comparison. We are talking about the top end of the two categories of ATEMs and then the two YOLO boxes. And I think if you're gonna buy a YOLO box today, it doesn't, well, I mean, there's a pretty big price difference. I suppose you might buy the original one and not the Pro, uh, but in here you will see some of the differences between those as well. So if you're watching this just to figure out the differences between the YOLO box and the YOLO box Pro, then you're gonna learn that too through here. All right, so, Let's start off with hardware. And at the first glance, uh, the yellow box is gonna come out on top for a lot of things. So hardware, built-in screen. Which ones have a built-in screen? So the YOLO boxes both have built-in screens. The base model is a uh, seven inch screen with a 350 nit brightness. So that's how bright it is, how um, easily you'll be able to see that outdoors. The A10 minis do not have displays on them. So that's pretty straightforward right there. If we look at these from the top here, you'll see here's your A10 mini extreme ISO. This is the box and then this is the YOLO box. And so the YOLO box of course has a nice big display built into it there. The brightness, incidentally, of those two, the difference is 100 nits, right? Yeah, 150 nits. That's not a huge difference, but that brightness allows you to see it outdoors, which is important because if you're treating this like a portable streaming device, you're outside, out in the field with it, you got to be able to see it even if there's sunlight. So, uh, so that brightness is enough to see it in bright sunlight. Not like the craziest brightest sunlight. You might want to put a shade on it if you're in full direct sun. Probably a good idea anyway, but outdoor normal brightness, it should be visible just fine. Headphone port, surprisingly kind of an important thing to be able to monitor your show, and the YOLO boxes both have them. The ATEM Mini Pro ISO does not. In fact, you don't get into the headphone jack on the ATEMs until you get up to the extreme models. And the reason for that, well, I should say reason, the workaround for that, if you have an ATEM without a headphone jack, and the expectation is that you are going to be plugging in a monitor so that you can see your multi-view, right? So that you can see this multi-view. You need to be able to see what's going on. Once you plug in a monitor to this multi-view, you can plug headphones into that monitor and then you can hear the show. Even if you're looking at this multi-view view, you're still gonna be seeing or hearing the program, what the audience would hear. That is great, but if you are using a monitor that doesn't have a headphone jack or you're just not using a monitor, then you kind of are audio blind. So I guess you'd just call that deaf on it. So we can't do, uh, you can't monitor audio on a smaller ATEM without an external device, external screen. Whereas on the ATEM Mini Extreme, you actually do have a headphone port. If we, let's see, I don't know where exactly it is on here. Um, let's see, somewhere over here, it's probably out of view. Anyway, somewhere around here, I don't even know where they are. There is the headphone port that is um, on these two devices. The YOLO box, on the other hand, has headphone ports built into it. All right, built-in SD card slot for recording. So the YOLO boxes both have the built-in SD card slot, the ATEMs do not. However, the ATEM is designed to be connected to a USB drive to record. So if you have a little SSD drive or any USB drive really, you can plug it into your ATEM and record the show that way. So there's your work, I don't know, work around, that's the way it's designed, but you do have that functionality built into the YOLO box with that SD card slot built in. 
the built-in SIM slot so that you can stream without having to have a local internet connection. The YOLO boxes both have a built-in SIM slot. The ATEMs do not, but the caveat there is that the ATEM can be connected to your smartphone. So you can have your phone tethered to your ATEM. And I actually did a show on this not that long ago explaining how to set this up, where you can take your iPhone or your Android phone uh, with a tethering plan. Now, that is an important part. You do have to have a tethering plan. Plug that into your ATEM and then use that cellular signal as a backup so or as a, your primary if needed so that is an option as well use cell phone for streaming so yes on all of these and and i separated this because it's not just about using the sim slot you can actually use a cell phone a separate phone for streaming on both devices so on the atem you plug it in on the yola box i believe you have to make a bluetooth connection to it but again it can use your cell phones tethering plan again you have to have the tethering plan to be able to do that um, instead of having to go out and buy a separate sim just for the yellow box obviously if you're doing this all the time you should do that plug a sim into the yellow box and you have an all-in-one solution in there uh, built-in wi-fi this is a biggie that people come up a lot the the uh, people ask about a lot the yolo box has built-in wi-fi the atem does not now i put in a caveat here however wi-fi should not be used for streaming basically you really don't want to use wi-fi if you can avoid it i very much appreciate that the yolo box has it built in so that you can use it if that is the only option uh, you know if all you have is wi-fi you can't get onto a hard line then at least you can still use the yolo box with the ATEM, you're out of luck. I mean, you can use your laptop and do some kind of weird tethering thing, but it's not really designed to do it that way. So yeah, having the Wi-Fi capability, even though I will say wholeheartedly, please don't use Wi-Fi to run your live stream. If it's the only choice you got, it's the only choice you got. So the Yolo Box has got you covered there. And let's see here, quarter 20 hole on, on the device for tripod or mounting it onto a camera. The Yolo Boxes has them, the ATEM does not. I mean, this is a pretty kind of straightforward. This is obviously designed to be used on your desk, whereas the Yolo Box can be, uh, it is meant to be taken on the road or taken anywhere you like or used on your desk. And incidentally, this little stand right here, so do I have another shot of this? If I go to the front view, yeah, you can see this here. This little stand is from Aaron Parecki. I've put a link to these down below in the description. So he makes these stands for all the YOLO boxes and for the ATEM boxes as well. And you have this like kind of cool desktop rigging setup. So that's what's on there. But if you are taking this out in the field, you don't need the stand, then back to the overhead view, what you do need is that quarter 20 tripod hole, which you do have on there. So super cool thing to have if you're gonna take this out on the road, the ATEM obviously not to be not designed to be mounted on your camera, but you know, it's a feature. It's something you need to know about. And what this really comes down to is this, standalone all in one. The Yolo Box is a standalone device. It is designed to be used on its own in its entirety. You don't need anything else. Well, other than cameras, obviously, let's not be silly. You still need a camera, but it is designed to be all in one. Whereas the ATEM Mini is really not. Um, and here I've written that technically the ATEM can be pre-configured so that you could just plug it into your network and go live. But that's really risky. Not having a computer along with it and potentially at least a, a external monitor to see what's going on, you're really going blind. So while technically, yes, you could take an ATEM that's completely pre-configured, make sure you save the startup state, unplug it, go on location, plug it into your network, plug your cameras in, press the go live button and go live without having a monitor attached, without having a computer nearby. Yes, that is technically possible, but very risky because you're very blind to what's happening. You don't know what the audience is really seeing. You don't know if it's even streaming to the right place. So not th something that you would really want to do. So I'm saying that the ATEM is definitely not meant to be a standalone device. Okay, so there's that first category of hardware. Let's close that out. So set up what it takes to set up the hardware. Mac OS and Windows apps. There are no apps for the Yolo Box. There are apps, of course, for the ATEM. And this is one of those you can say, well, you don't need the app on the Yolo Box, so it doesn't matter, right? Everything is built into it. And that is very true, but there are certainly times when it can be advantageous to have control of your box from a separate device. And so the ATEM software is designed for that. That's how the ATEM is designed to be controlled. And actually, if you kind of go back historically on the ATEMs before the minis came out, they were designed to be rack mounted and still are the bigger ones designed to be rack mounted. They have some limited interface on the front of them, but you certainly are not meant to sit there in front of the rack and push buttons to change camera angles. That's not how they're designed. They're designed to be controlled via software. So uh, it, it's like from the core up. Now the ATEM minis have a lot of buttons on them. You can definitely use that as a, uh, as hardware only, but 
this software is a huge, huge part of that and pretty important slash critical part of that. So again, there is no computer interface on the Mac. There's no web browser interface or anything like that, but there is a, an app on the ATEM. Um, no software needed, so let's flip it around the other way. Yeah, you don't need software. Oops, you don't need software on the ATEM. Uh, sorry, on the Yellow Box. You don't have to have software, so that's why there is none on the ATEM. You really do. You really do need that software in there. Firmware updates. All devices support firmware updates, and I've noted here that the Yellow Box is technically an Android computer. So. Theoretically, you can add more features to the YOLO box than you could to the ATEM. The ATEM is very limited in the hardware that it has. Some new features get added by a software, but it's mostly bug fixes. Maybe some little things can get added, more streaming destinations, stuff like that. Whereas the YOLO box, they can add anything in there that the hardware is capable of doing. So as long as the hardware can handle it, they can write the software for it. So in that regard, the YOLO box is probably a bit more future-proof on what it would be able to handle. I wouldn't expect it to, let's say, be able to suddenly do 4K because the hardware uh, HDMI ports on there are very unlikely to be 4K capable. However, you know, maybe they are, I don't know. Um, however, things like completely redesigning the audio interface could totally be done on the yellow box, which is actually something that is being worked on right now, the company has said um, a few times. So, you know, you got more flexibility with upgradability on the yellow box. Direct mouse and keyboard support. So yes, on the Yolo box, not really applicable on the ATEM. And what this means is that when you're looking at your Yolo box, while here, let's just switch over to it real quick. Um, you know, this is a touch-based interface. I go in here and I start setting things up and I can go in, I don't know, add a title slide or whatever, all the different things you can do in here. I can do with a, uh, so here, if I wanted to add a lower thirds, I can go in here and start typing in the text for that, right? That is all possible on the ATEM itself or you can take a USB keyboard and a USB mouse and plug them into the ATEM and then control it that way. I'm sorry, into the YOLO box and control it that way. So that's, that's pretty cool, right? That's a neat little feature to have that doesn't apply to the ATEM. That's why I said not applicable NA, because if you're controlling it through software, then you're on a computer. So obviously you have your mouse and your keyboard. There is no methodology of doing anything on the ATEM itself with a mouse or a keyboard, so it doesn't really apply. But just wanted to make sure that you knew that that is a feature on the Yolo box. And then finally, save and restore settings. So this, I put no in here, but I just saw an update last night, so I'm gonna actually change this to yes and yes. So it, it's a little bit different than save and restore. It's more about reusing previous events, but they've just added, and it's a somewhat limited add in the uh, release notes that I saw. I guess there's more features coming. It used to be that in the Yola box, when you created a show and then did that live show, you could not reuse that live show. You had to rebuild everything from scratch. Whereas now in this recent update, you can reuse a live show, so basically duplicate the previous show and do it again. So, so you do have kind of a save and restore settings now, whereas when I initially wrote this, you didn't, but like I said, I, it just came up, so, so that's kind of cool. All right, let's, uh, that's everything in setup. So let's move on to outputs. All right, HDMI slash program out. The Yolo boxes both have them and the ATEM minis have them. The ATEM mini pro or ATEM mini extreme has two outputs, but there's a huge difference in what these outputs are for. So let's go scroll down the rest of this lineup here. Multi-view out. So you have multi-view on the ATEMs, and that is this. That's the multi-view off of the ATEM, so you can see all of your inputs simultaneously. On the YOLO box, do you have that? Well, sort of. So it's essentially mirroring the display, and that's what you're seeing here. This is a mirror of the display. It is the same thing that you're seeing on the box here that is mirrored out. You can have the HDMI out show just the program. So just your program out can go out over HDMI, or it can mirror the screen. But if you aren't seeing it on the display here, then you can't see it on an external monitor, meaning that you can't monitor different camera angles that are not currently visible on the screen here. So if you're in the middle of building a title or something, you're gonna have limited access to what you can actually see on there. It's just a very different approach, right? The multi-view approach, this is kind of a core broadcast thing where you see all of your inputs. I only have one camera plugged into here, but you see other info on the bottom. And, um, and then on the, uh, on the yellow box, it is again, just a mirroring of that. So very different approaches, but there you go. All right, and then USB as a webcam. So this actually, I guess I, I should have updated this before. I wrote these slides initially a long time ago. Um, these are both just added. So you do now have the ability to use your Yolo box as a webcam on the, 
you, sorry, use your yellow box as, an, as a webcam, and the ATEM has always had that since day one. The difference, though, I, I did see in the release notes for this feature that, again, was recently added, you don't have all the full titling capabilities on the yellow box going out over USB for a webcam, so it's kind of limited in what you can do with it, but they have promised more features are coming. And when Yellow Box promises these things, or Yellow Live is the company, when they promise these things, you can you can rely on that. They are actively actually working on it. So, uh, you know, it, it's coming. So you're getting more. And they did say that webcam was coming. It's now here. It's just in a very basic form. Eventually, you'll have essentially the full, everything you would normally do on a program out, you'll be able to do over USB as a webcam. So that's kind of cool. All right. And outputs. That is everything for outputs. Let's talk about power. Power, built-in battery. The Yolo Box has built-in battery. The ATEM does not. Once again, comes down to that core difference in how they're meant to be used. The Yolo Box is designed as a standalone, all-in-one device, so clearly it must have a battery. The ATEM is not. Now, yes, you could rig up a battery to power the ATEM, but it's not going to be simple. The, the power port on the ATEM is not a USB port. It's a DC tap, so you would have to you know, get like a, 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 what you, a V mount battery or something and get the right DC port and tap it up that way. It, you know, it can be done, certainly, but it's not designed that way. So the Yolo box is designed. I mean, it's got the built in battery. So there you go. Uh, AC power included. So technically, no on the Yolo box. It comes with a USB cable, but then you do have to supply your own power brick. That's why I put no in there. Uh, of course, yes on the ATEMs. They come with their own power supply, of course, because it's the only way to run it. The USB power on the ATEM, the USB cable is used to charge it and, um, and it can power it as well. So like I have it plugged in right now so that the battery doesn't die on it. Uh, so, and the battery lasts a long time. I, you know, I shouldn't say it like it's gonna die on me, but it, this is plugged in so it's keeping a charge all the time. And there we go. Okay, uh, let's see. And that, oh, actually the last one, power with USB. So you can power the Yolo box with USB. The ATEM mini cannot be powered with USB. So there's your power stuff. All right, so inputs. Now we're getting into the big meat of it. The original Yolo Box has two HDMI inputs. The Yolo Box Pro has three HDMI inputs. The A10 Mini Pro ISO has four, and the A10 Mini Extreme ISO has eight. So here we're seeing a massive difference and advantage for the a10 Mini Pro ISO, uh, A10 Mini Extreme ISO, getting the right name in there. Eight inputs, you can see them all here, eight HDMI inputs, whereas there's only three on here. So that is, that is significant. If you are running a show where you need more than those inputs that are on the Yolo Box, yeah, Yolo Box is not gonna work for you. I mean, you could tether um, a 10 Mini into the Yolo Box and add inputs that way, but then live switching it does get certainly confusing. Uh, possible, technically possible, but we're talking what's built in, and the Yolo Box has just the three versus the eight on the A10 Mini Extreme. And that's what you need to compare, right? You need to compare the Yolo Box Pro to the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. So you're talking on the higher end, the $1,200 price point, you're talking three inputs on the Yolo Box Pro, eight inputs on the A10 Mini Extreme. Built-in scalers, all of them have built-in scalers, which is great. This means that you can plug in a variety of resolutions and or frame rates into either of these boxes, and they will be scaled to whatever you're broadcasting. So if it's 1080p, 2997, or 24, or 25, or whatever you're doing, they will scale out to that. Now I've noted on here, and this goes for both of them, they will take in 1080 or 720, but not Ultra HD. You can't send a 4K signal into either of these, and that applies to both of them. So just so you're aware, you cannot take a 4K source into these. Both of them will go, ooh, don't know what to do with that. They have to be HD, but they can be either 1080p or 720p, and they will scale appropriately. Pretty cool. USB camera inputs, for, i.e. a webcam, using a webcam into the device. So the Yolo boxes both have this. The ATEMs do not. <clears throat> Excuse me, and this is this is kind of a big deal for a lot of folks. I get this question all the time. People asking how they can hook up a webcam to their ATEM box, and you can't. <clears throat> Somebody in China created a box that converts USB to HDMI, but the cost of that box and hardware, you may as well just go out and buy a cheap HDMI camera. It just doesn't make sense. The quality of a webcam is so poor. Now some of the high, I know Legitech's got a higher end webcam now that actually has HDMI out. Cool, that'll work because it's HDMI. But a USB webcam, not gonna work on the ATEM. However, on the Yolo box, you can. So a lot of people really, really like that. The fact that you can take any webcam, plug it in and off you go, that's pretty cool. So advantage there for the Yolo box for sure. I think. It'd be nice to see that on the ATEM. I don't think we're ever going to. Um, I think it would require a whole different type of 
hardware converter protocol inside the box that just isn't there. But anyway, there you go. So good to know. And dedicated audio inputs. So the Yolo box has, the, the original Yolo box has one input. Yolo box Pro has one mic level and one line level input. And both the A10 minis, all the A10 minis have two inputs and those can be either line or mic level. You change that in software. And then it's also noted here that all video and USB inputs also have audio. So if you're, so looking at the A10 mini, you've got two audio inputs, but then you have eight HDMI inputs. Each one of those eight HDMI inputs can have audio on them. So technically you'd have 10 audio inputs. The Yolo box, all three of its HDMI plus the USB are audio inputs as well. And so you can pull in audio from there. Now, we'll talk about a little bit more in a bit here, but it is really important. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this now, even though I'm gonna say it again later, but I wanna say it now that we're talking about audio. On the ATEM currently, or on the ATEM, you can use any or all audio sources that you want. So if you wanna pull in audio from mic one, HDMI three, and HDMI eight, because that's where your mics are, you can do that. You can independently adjust levels between them, turn them on and off, whatever you want, perfect. On the Yolo box, however, you can't. You can only have one audio enabled at a time. So you have to have your audio from all sources, whatever that is, whether it's a, an interview you're running or whatever, all coming in in a single audio input. Now, Yolo box, Yolo Live has promised that they're working on a much more refined audio interface. However, that is not here today, so that is an important thing to understand. Okay, now let's look at media and effects. <clears throat> this is a big category, we've got a lot here to cover. Uh, all right, play videos without any additional devices, meaning no external hardware. The Yola Box can do this, the ATEMs cannot. Huge, huge difference here. So if you've got a, a bumper, an ad roll, mid roll, uh, any little video that you want to play to your audience, with the Yola Box, you can actually load that video onto the Yola Box and play it directly in there. Whereas the ATEM, there is no way to do that. You have to have some kind of external device. That could be something like a HyperDeck that will play. You can take any HDMI device. You could have an Apple TV that you plug in and play video through there. You could take a computer and plug it in and play video on the computer mirrored through there. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but you have to do it externally. There is no built-in device for the ATEM, no built-in way for it to play video, whereas the Yolo Box has that. So that's a really important differentiator in there and a really nice nod to the Yolo Box for having that. <clears throat> uh, same thing with PDFs. So the Yolo Box has a built-in PDF reader. So you could load up, let's say your slide deck. Let's say you're doing a simple slide presentation and you don't need animations, you just need static text on a page or graphics or whatever, you can load up, make uh, your slides as a PDF document, load that PDF onto the Yolo box, and then you can do a little picture in picture with you talking about your slides as your slides roll by. Pretty slick, again, possible to do that entirely all in one device. Whereas with the ATEM, if you wanna play a PDF through there, you're gonna have to plug a computer in and basically mirror the computer screen and play the PDF or uh, load the PDF that way. So big difference there. Load graphics without a computer. So. Yes, on the Yolo box, no, you need a, a computer for the ATEM. And what this means is that the Yolo box has an SD card slot, so you can have graphics on an SD card that you pop in and then load them up. Whereas on the ATEM, you have to use a computer to move graphics over to it. But saying that you don't need a computer is a little bit of a misnomer because how did those files get onto the SD card in the first place? And for that, you needed a computer. So you have to have a computer to get the graphics onto the SD card. But what it does mean is that you could have an SD card with tons of graphics on it that you might need for any possible situation and then load up the ones that you need for any given show in the field. You wouldn't have to plug in a computer to do that. So, uh, so that's kind of the difference in there. So to say you don't need a computer at all isn't really true, but you do, you do not need a computer just to load the graphics on there onto the YOLO, assuming that you already have them on an SD card. Built-in title generator. There is a built-in title generator on the Yolo box and there is not on the ATEM, which is a really nice thing. Again, it goes back to that whole all-in-one idea. I don't have to have external hardware, computers, et cetera, to run a show off the Yolo box. I can literally make my graphics, my lower thirds titles in the Yolo box itself. And it's a pretty good interface for that. Um, here, let's just uh, see. Well, here, we're looking at it right now, right? I already pulled this template up. So you can reselect a different template in here. There's a variety of templates to choose from. And obviously you can edit the text and do whatever you're gonna do on there. So it's pretty slick, right? That is a pretty slick thing to be able to do. Okay, moving on.
Uh, so built-in tile generator, there we go. Built-in scoreboard feature, so the A10, uh, the Yolo box has this cool scoreboard feature built into it. You don't have anything like that on the ATEM. Again, external hardware required. So, you know, if you're live streaming like your kid's soccer game, you can totally do a score keeping thing on, on the Yolo box. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? That's a neat little feature. I like it, nice. A built-in countdown clock, yes on the Yolo box, no on the ATEM. So when you were watching, if you were tuned into this live show before it actually started, you saw a countdown clock that didn't come from the ATEM. That is totally external hardware and software required to do that. Those little touches, things like the title cards, the lower third, the scoreboards that are built into the Yolo box are really nice. Again, goes back to that whole all-in-one idea uh, but because, as I said in the beginning, it is an Android computer, it can do anything in software that the engineers want to make it do. It could do any other number of things on there. You know, the scoreboard, the, the countdown clock, those are just features that somebody there wrote code for. So if you've got some crazy thing that you think would be amazing that other people would love to have on there, by all means, reach out to Yolo Live. You got Frank here in the chat. Tell him in the chat that you want to see this feature. And, you know, they'll add it to the list. No promises it'll happen, but you got to ask. If you, don't, you don't get what you don't ask for. Whereas on the ATEM, that stuff simply can't be done. It's never going to be added. Can't be done. So, okay. Uh, let's see here, built-in scrolling caption. You've got that on the yellow box as well. Uh, color generators, color bar, oh no, co just solid color generators. Interesting thing that Yolo doesn't have, and Frank, you can certainly correct me if I'm wrong here, but I've, I don't recall ever seeing this, just to make a solid color. So uh, you could do a solid color as part of a title, but if you just need a solid blank color, you don't have it. Now this is probably not something you need for anything. The only places you would need it, you do have something like that in the Yolo box, but um, on the ATEM there is an actual color generator page where you can generate solid colors to, to use in a variety of things. So it's just, you know, it's a feature that is on there. I wanted to make sure that was listed. Fade to black. You don't have a fade to black button on the Yolo box, whereas you do on the ATEM. Honestly, I don't know how widely that is necessary, but it's there, right? There's a dedicated FT, it's a big button, actually, it's a little bit too big if you ask me, but here it is, the FTB button. You hit that and the whole thing fades to black. So, you know, uh, it's good to know. Uh, and you've got that if you need it, never use it, but it's there. And I think it's a pretty common thing in broadcast, which is why it's in the ATEMs. It's not in the Yolo box, but maybe not that big of a deal. Color bar generator. So the Yolo box does not have that where the ATEMs do. And that's just the ability to output color bars. So let's see if I go, can I do it from here? So many buttons on this thing. Um, I don't even have that, I don't even know. Maybe it is, but whatever. Uh, in the software, you can turn that on and then you can generate color bars, which can be very useful for doing color accuracy tests on monitors and so on. But you know, for the most people, for the most part, not really necessary, but it's there. Again, listing all the functions here. This is a neat one, and I think this is something that Yolo Box should add. So, um, you know, hey, you gotta put this one in. Pretty cool feature. But this is the ability to capture a still to immediately use in a production. The ATEMs have this, Yolo Box does not. What this means is there is a button in the software to capture a still frame of whatever's happening on screen. So basically it creates a PNG of the current program and it loads that immediately into the media pool, which can be any number of things. Uh, if you're doing a title slide layout, which you know, I guess if you're doing title layouts on the yellow box, then you don't need this function because you can see where you're laying the title out already. But on the ATEM, if you're doing a title, you need to have, are you doing that in external software? You need to know where to position it. And so you can take, let's say this is my frame and I'm doing a title for this. I can hit save frame and it'll save that. And then I can pull it off the ATEM, load it up into Photoshop or whatever and decide a title around it. But it could also be used for things like, oh my gosh, there's something going, you know, some things falling apart, I need to kind of freeze the show for a moment. I don't want to fade to black. I don't want to, um, I don't know, I don't want to turn everything off. So I just need to load a graphic. I don't have a st please stand by graphic so I can take anything that's on screen, load it as a frame and move it up there. So it's just one of those features that's kind of neat that's in there. Downstream key. So keying, I'm not going to spend time going into the difference between upstream and downstream keys, but at their core, they are things that lay on top of your video. That's all you really need to know for this. So the Yolo box has downstream keys as does the A10 mini. So no, no major difference in there. You've got them on both. The upstream keys with a Luma pattern and DVE key, you do not have on the Yolo box, you do have on the A10 mini. Now that is what would allow this, although I messed something up and so it's positioning is wrong. So that's why I'm not using it. But this is a DVE key where I have the video of me. So there's my normal video. And then I've keyed out a, there we go. I've keyed out a piece of that into a circle to overlay on the video. 
So that is what a DVE key will do. Um, Luma key is actually how I'm running these. So this is a video, because this is coming off of another computer, loaded up as black. So let's see here, if I, yep, there we go. That's how it's loaded up on the computer. And then back in here, because of the Luma key, I'm Luma keying out the black, and that's giving this as a result. So uh, that's something that you have on the ATEM. You don't have that on the Yellow Box. And of course, you can use this for any, any number of things. Uh, you do, however, have chroma keying on all devices. Well, actually, not on the original Yolo Box. You have it on the Yolo Box Pro and then on both of the ATEMs. So that chroma keying is your green screen, blue screen effect. So that's, that's what that is. That's chroma, meaning color. So you can key out the chroma. I suppose you could key out, you could use a chroma key on the ATEM to key out black, but it's still, it's a different, it's a different approach. Luma key versus a chroma key is a different thing. Anyway. Picture-in-picture, picture. so yes, all devices have a picture-in-picture picture functionality. You do have more control on the ATEM as far as size, positioning, and so on, but straight up, all devices have the ability to do a picture-in-picture. Picture. The split screen, side-by-side -side split screen type of view, you have that on both of the YOLO boxes. You have that on the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO because of something called SuperSource. You don't, however, have it on the base level ATEM. Without getting into the extremes, you do not have SuperSource, which means you cannot generate a true split screen side by side. You can fake it by taking the picture in picture and making the, the top layer, the picture in picture layer, making that 100% size, cropping it to the half and positioning it to one side. So then like if I was gonna do that right now with an interview, I would stand over here and do a picture in picture over here that just takes up the other half of the screen. Um, but this is not a true split screen, meaning I can take two video sources, scale them however I want to and position them wherever I want. To do that, you have to have super source. Super source is only in the A10 Mini Extreme and Extreme ISO models, whereas on the Yolo Box, that exists on both. So right there, if your thing is to do two up interviews side by side and you want control over positioning where you position the people on screen, uh, the Yolo Box is gonna be a cheaper option because you can do that on the base metal Yolo Box, whereas you have to get into the, what I think is an $1,100 A10 Mini or is it thousand, whatever it is, the, the A10 Mini Extreme to do that. Good to know. Uh, super source, so as I was just explaining, sort of, super source does not exist on the Yolo Box and Yolo Box Pro or the ATEM Mini ISO. You only get to super source on the ATEM Mini Extreme and just to drive that point home, it's not just about split screen picture in picture. Super source allows you to take up to four inputs simultaneously, position them, scale them, crop them anywhere on screen. It is total flexibility. And you can on these ATEM Mini Extremes, in fact, combine that with four upstream keys and get up to eight different things on screen at once. It's pretty impressive, but there you go. Okay, a uh, variety of transition styles. So yes, all of them have variety of transitions. So that's your fades, dip to blacks, wipes, and so on. You can change the transition rate. So if you want a one second transition or half a second or whatever, you can do that on all the devices except for the base level YOLO box. There it's a fixed duration. I don't remember how long it is, but it's fixed. You can't change it. Custom transition control. You really don't have custom control on the YOLO boxes, but you do on the ATEMs. And, and that comes down to things like if you're doing a dip to black or it's dip to color, what color are you dipping to? If you're gonna do a wipe, is it a, uh, not only the speed of the wipe, but is it a soft edge wipe? Is it a horizontal wipe or an angled wipe? And you have total control over that on the ATEM. You don't on the yellow box. So if you're big in transitions, you wanna do all kinds of fancy walkie transitions, then the ATEM is way more powerful than the yellow box is for that. But that is the kind of thing that could be added on the yellow box because it's, um, you know, it's all software. All that said though, I, I'm not a big fan of transitions. You'll see in here, I'm not using them almost anywhere. It's pretty much all hard cuts. I think the transitions can easily be overused and become distracting. So I'm not really gonna knock Yellow Box for not having that because mm, you probably shouldn't be using them anyway, at least not to any extreme level. Okay. Uh, still store slash media pool. So yes, they all do. So this is the ability to store graphics inside of the hardware to play. Whereas uh, the member of the Yolo box, you can do videos as well. The ATEM, you can just do still graphics, but that's what this is specifically still store. It's called the media pool. Uh, the ATEM has 20 maximum slots. The Yolo doesn't have a hard max. So it's, I don't know, I'm not quite sure what the graph, what the Criteria is, but there is no hard maximum. You basically just load them up until it breaks. Um, the graphics on the on the ATEM, you only get still graphics, but on the Yellow Box, you can do videos and PDFs, which we talked about earlier. So there's a huge difference on there. I guess the limit on the Yellow Box is just how much it can store. 
Uh, load media from the SD card, we already talked about this, so you do have that ability on the Yola box, you do not on the ATEM. So just to kind of reiterate that point, if you have graphics, titles, whatever, that you want to load onto the ATEM, you have to have a computer to load those on. No, no two ways about it, you have to have a computer to load that in. Whereas on the Yola box, all you need is those graphics on an SD card, pop in that SD card, browse them and load them on, copy them over to the Yola box. So big difference there, big difference. Load media from any computer on the network. So you cannot do this on the Yola box, you can do this on the ATEM. What this means is, so I've got my ATEM here, I got my computer here. They could be connected over USB, and that's fine, and then I would you know, could load graphics that way. But they can also be connected over the network, which is clearly the preferred way to work because you have a lot more flexibility. What this means by the any computer is I can have multiple computers talking to the ATEM at once. And so if I'm doing a big show, I can have someone controlling audio on the ATEM and they're just loading up the audio board, which I... Oh, wait, uh, yeah, you've seen the audio board before. So I can load up the full audio interface of the ATEM software and control that from one computer. Meanwhile, somebody else, the graphics guy, is loading up all the graphics onto the ATEM, making graphics in Photoshop and loading them on from the separate computer. So you can have multiple computers accessing the same hardware. The Yola box doesn't have anything like that because you can't remote, you can't access it over a computer at all. So obviously then you can't access it over multiple computers. So it's a pretty, pretty cool thing for a larger production. Uh, and then load media directly from Photoshop. So this goes along with the computer thing, but it's a, it's a specific line item in here because it is a specific feature in the ATEM. When you install the ATEM software, if you have Photoshop installed, it loads a plugin into Photoshop, which allows you to load graphics from Photoshop, publish them directly to the ATEM, so you don't have to save the graphic and then go into the ATEM software and drag it in or copy it in. You can literally publish it directly to the ATEM itself. And then you can even load it to air. So if you are, again, doing graphics for a live event and you're, you're the guy doing the graphics and you're doing them live, you can publish from Photoshop directly to air using the ATEM and the Photoshop plugin, which is really, really neat. Not gonna apply to anyone doing a solo production like I'm doing here, but if you are doing a big live production, then that's something that you have the ability to do, which is really, really cool. Okay, audio, programmable audio delay. The Yola Box does not have this, the ATEM does. Why is this important? If you're bringing your audio in separately from the video, so you're using the mic or the line level inputs on either device, that audio is coming in in real time, or at least extremely close to it if you're using digital mics. HDMI video in, however, will have a delay. Some cameras have more delay than others, but that delay needs to be compensated for. The easiest solution to this is to run your audio through the camera directly and then everything's in sync, you don't have to worry about it. However, if you're bringing audio in off of a board because you're doing, I don't know, like let's say you're, you're doing a live streaming a play, and so you need to pull the audio off of the soundboard, you can program that delay, that necessary delay in the ATEM. You can't do that on the Yola box. Now, to be fair, if you're pulling audio off of a big mixing board, they should have the ability to program the delay on their end, but if you're just using a simple mic setup and for whatever reason you're bringing your mic or you have to bring your mic into the line input, then having that programmable delay is really, really important. So that is something that you have on the ATEM, you don't have on the Yola box. But again, that's something that could easily be added and given that they're doing a whole big audio reworking here, I would imagine that's something that's coming. Right, right guys? Yeah, totally coming. Okay. Uh, Multi-input audio, so this, oh, this is the thing I was talking about earlier where you can bring in audio from any of the sources on the ATEM, but you cannot do that currently on the YOLO box, meaning that I can bring in, like I said, audio from inputs two, five, and three, along with the line in, mix them however I want to, can't do that on the YOLO yet. I know they're working on a lot of stuff for that, so that will probably come, but currently we're talking about what's here today, there you go. Um, advanced or equalizer and advanced audio processing. So again, no on the Yola box, yes on the ATEMs. The, the ATEMs have a lot, a lot of audio processing. If you've ever used DaVinci Resolve, there's what's called the Fairlight page. That's where all the audio processing happens. A massive amount of that audio processing is built into this hardware. So noise gates, um, compression, EQ, all that stuff is built in and you can do all of that in the hardware, which is extremely powerful. And that is something that is on the ATEMs, not on the Yola box. Again, they're working on some enhanced stuff, but we gotta talk about what's here today. All right, all right, where am I? Back to here. 
in individual input audio levels control. So you do have that on the yellow box. You can change the levels of the uh, of what's coming in, but you just can't mix multiples at once. And you, of course, you have that on the ATEM as well. All righty, recording. Recording the program. So all devices can record the program, the program being the show. So the YOLO box will record it to its built-in SD card. And I see Frank has said that you can load and record local SD card video at the same time. So meaning that it can be recording and you can copy off or, or load off uh, videos from it simultaneously. So that's great. So all devices will record the program. The YOLO box does it to the SD card. The ATEM Mini requires an external USB drive, but there you go, that's how that works. Then there's recording the ISOs. This is a huge feature. The YOLO box does not do this, whereas the ATEM does. The ISO models, specifically the ISO models. But again, this is what we are comparing to because price-wise, that's where the fair comparison is. So what the ISO feature means is that when you hit record, you have the ability to record not just the program, so that's, you know, this part right here, but also the isolated streams or the ISO streams of all inputs. So all eight inputs on the ATEM plus the separate audio inputs can get recorded into separate files that can be re-edited and remixed later. And in fact, on the ATEM, not only do you have the ability to record it, but you also get the Resolve project file. So if you are doing a live show and you're switching camera angles and you're going to republish that later, you're gonna take the show, re-edit and republish it later, all the camera angle switches that you did live are recorded into a DaVinci Resolve file that you can load into Resolve and then make some tweaks. Oh, I went to camera B at the wrong timing. I loaded the wrong camera. Whatever. You can rechange, readjust everything, or you can start from scratch, throw it all away and just, just re-edit from scratch. But uh, that is possible on the ATEM Mini Extreme ISOs. Clearly not something that happens on the YOLO box since there is no ISO recording. And in case you've never heard of this feature before and you're thinking, that's really cool, but I use Premiere or I use Final Cut, you can take the Resolve project file, open it in the free version of Resolve, and then export out an XML or an FCP XML to use in other NLEs. So you have that functionality there. And then this is another really, really cool feature, record in camera ISOs to be raw uh, and auto automatically match them up. So clearly this doesn't exist for the YOLO box. This is a really, really huge feature on the ATEM. It does require the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, but if you are doing a live setup, if you build a live setup where you have multiple Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, the 4K or the 6K, not only can you get your 1080p ISOs recorded to a disc, but you can automatically trigger recording to be raw, so that's the Blackmagic raw, in the cameras in 4K or 6K, and then when you bring the project file into Resolve, you bring in those raw files as well, they automatically find each other and match up, and then you can re-edit or re-broadcast your, or re-upload your show in 4K or even 6K if you wanted to. 6K usually means you're gonna punch into a 4K shot, but you have that functionality, which is incredibly cool. Now that doesn't mean that you can't go around to all of your cameras and just hit record on each camera, assuming you have a camera that can record internally and output clean HDMI at the same time. Not all cameras do, but most of the Lumix ones do. That's why you should use Lumix. Um, you do have that ability, you can push those buttons on each camera, but you're not gonna get any of the auto matching or anything like that. So you're just manually doing it, but that's how that works. So that's a really, really cool feature on the, on the ATEMs, assuming that you're using the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. Moving on to streaming. So streaming, stream to multiple destinations at once without additional services. The YOLO box can do this, the ATEM cannot. So the YOLO box has a built-in functionality where while you can stream to YouTube or Facebook or Twitch or whatever directly, you can stream to a service that YOLO box provides for free and then they will restream it out to your multiple destinations. You can do this with the ATEM by using a service like restream.io, but you have to pay for that separately. You have to uh, buy or license whatever restream to do that. So you have that functionality built into the YOLO box, which is pretty darn cool to be able to, for them to provide that service for free, essentially it comes with your YOLO box. That's nice. So that is a really, really cool functionality that you have. Schedule a live event without a computer. You can do this on the YOLO boxes. You can't on the ATEMs. And what I mean by this is, let's go back to the YOLO box. Let me back out of here. Um, I can create a live stream. So I click on the plus and I go create a live stream and this will allow me to title and schedule my live stream show and have that get loaded onto my YouTube channel. This is assuming you've already logged into your YouTube channel, of course. 
That means that I don't have to plan ahead for a show. I can literally build the show right here on the ATEM and go live with it. Whereas on the ATEM, uh, on the Yellow Box and go live with it. Whereas on the ATEM, you can't. You have to have a pre-existing live show. So you have to go into the YouTube studio, create a new live show, and then get the key for that and drop it into the ATEM to stream to it. So big difference there. If you are on the go kind of creating things, then using the uh, Yellow Box is really a nice advantage for that. So that's a pretty cool feature. I pointed out on here that you can do what's called live now with the ATEM and this is a function on YouTube where you set up a it's called live now it's basically kind of an open live show that you can just start going live at any time you don't have to title or pre-build or schedule or anything you just go live to it so you could technically set up your ATEM to stream to that destination and then you just hit go live and you're live but you can't make a title you can't do a schedule you can't load a thumbnail any of that stuff it's just kind of a straight to live straight to air. Stream to custom RTMP or RT, tar, RTM, RMTP, wow, RT, RT, R, I clearly got those transposing RTMP, R, RTMP, Whew. too much, RTMP, so this should be RTMPS, RTS, is that right, I don't even know anymore, you know what, whatever, custom, you can do custom ones on the YOLO box, you can't on the ATEM, you would have to go in and modify the XML, so, oh, look, I even have a note there, I would linked to old video, which I didn't do, but I did a video, see, quite a few years ago on, on uh, modifying the XML, and it's not your standard exported XML, it's some other file in the computer, but modifying the ATEM so that it can stream to other destinations that it doesn't have included. If you're looking for that video, search on YouTube, search Photo Joseph ATEM Restream.io. And the reason is for Restream.io is because they actually sponsored that video and I showed how to modify the ATEM so that you could stream to Restream and therefore stream out to multiple destinations. Since then, Blackmagic has built that functionality into the ATEM. They've built Restream as one of the dropdowns. So you don't have to customize it anymore. But if you want to do your own custom destination, that's how you do it. You got to go in there and mess with the code. It's not a big deal, but it has to be done. Whereas on the yellow box, it just is there. You just punch it in and off you go. It actually has a really cool function of how that whole thing's whole setup works. It's pretty slick, but anyway. Uh, let's see here. Facebook and YouTube comments and monitor overlay. So this is something that the Yolo Box has, the ATEM does not. What this means is that you can not only see your YouTube comments on the display here, but actually incorporate them into the show, which is a really nice setup on the Yolo Box. ATEM doesn't do that at all. The way that I'm doing the comments on here is a completely separate thing. Massive other hardware involved in getting this all together, but, uh, but there you go. So that's something that you can do built in on the Yolo Box, which is pretty, pretty neat. 480p, 720p, and 1080p streaming options. So you do on the Yolo Box, you can go all the way down to 480p. You don't on the ATEM. You can do 1080, can you do 720? Shoot, now I'm forgetting if you I didn't put a note in here. I think on the ATEM you can only do 1080, whereas on the Yolo Box you can go all the way down to 480. So if you really have a low bandwidth need, then you can do that on there. Various bit rate encoding choices. So yes, across, across the board, you can change the bit rate. It's a little bit different setup. There's a slider on the YOLO box. There's presets on the ATEM. The presets on the ATEM can be modified with the same process of how you modify the streaming destinations, but basically you have a series of presets. So you have a little bit more flexibility on the YOLO box than you do on the ATEM, but again, your needs should be covered with what's built in. Uh, there are other types of streaming though. The, Yolo Box Pro will do CBR, VBR, and CQ. So that's constant bit rate, variable bit rate, or constant quality streaming options, allowing you to choose through those. Whereas what you get on the ATEM is always a constant bit rate. Now, that said, it does actually do a variable bit rate. You, even though you're setting, let's say you set a 10 megabit bit rate, it does actually change that. And you'll know that because if you load up a title slide and you hold that for a long time, and you look at it on YouTube in the um, in the YouTube studio, it will say low bit rate because it's getting less data. So it is actually a variable bit rate, but you are still defining a target bit rate for it. You just have more control over that on the YOLO box than you do in the ATEM. Let's move on to the next section, device control. We've talked about this part a little bit because it came up earlier, control from a computer anywhere on the network, so you cannot do that with the yellow box as you can with the ATEM. This is a big deal, right? The ability to take control of your hardware remotely is kind of important. Again, it depends on the type of show you're doing, right? The Yolo Box is designed as this all-in-one portable solution. The ATEM is designed as a requires other pieces and sits on your desk solution. So they're very, very different. But the fact that you can control the ATEM from external hardware and software, 
obviously is a big deal. That allows me to do everything that I'm doing today. In this live show, it is all being controlled, you might have noticed, through a Stream Deck sitting here on my desk, which is running, uh, which is triggering companion buttons, which are controlling all the other things that are happening around us. So there is a massive amount of power in that. That brings us to the BitFocus Companion slash Stream Deck control. You can't do this with the YOLO box. You can do this with the ATEMs. Now, that's not to say that the YOLO Live couldn't create that capability. Again, it's an Android box. It is on your network, right? It's plugged into my Ethernet cable here. It's on the network. So theoretically, they could make it so that it can be controlled externally, but it doesn't work that way today. That ability to control things through third-party software is immeasurably awesome and powerful. And in case you're thinking, well, but the ATEM has macros, why don't you just use that? I used to do everything with macros, and then one day I graduated to using Companion. Um, Aaron, that was his fault. He finally pushed me into it, and I was like, oh my god, what took me so long to get here? Companion allows you to tie multiple things together. So a macro can only trigger one ATEM, that ATEM that it's on, whereas Companion can trigger multiple ATEMs. So I've got Companion plugged into my audio mixer from Behringer, multiple ATEMs at once, into HyperDeck recorders, into the Perl encoder. There's all this stuff that it does. I can control all of it from one place. So it's pretty awesome to be able to do. iOS apps control. Again, no iOS app control on the Yolo box. Yes, on the ATEM. And that's third-party stuff. So like the... Um, uh, like Mix Effect that was mentioned earlier, this is third-party software that runs on an iOS app or, uh, or an iPad or an iPhone that can control the ATEM. Pretty powerful stuff. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Quick access. Okay, this is important. Quickly access multiple controls like audio levels, transition style, picture-in-picture -picture settings, and more from the device hardware buttons without having to dig through the menus. So this is... I mean, this could be kind of, depending on how you read the question, could be a little bit misleading, but what I'm talking about here is this. All of these buttons on here, I have immediate access to not just my camera angles, I have control over the audio up here, I have, uh, well, this is all, well, sorry, this is all about audio here, I have control over cameras, things like um, camera gain, camera focus, I can control cameras on here. All of my upstream, downstream keys can be controlled in here. All of this is on buttons that are directly on here. Now, I've just spent a bunch of time talking about how you can control this all through software. This could live under my desk, never touch it. In fact, I have one mounted under this desk here that I never touch. It's all controlled through software. The one in my rack is all controlled through software, but you do have the ability to do that. Now, that said, you also control the the, uh, the YOLO box by touching the interface here. But what I'm really talking about here is you have instant access to I don't even know how many buttons are on this thing. I don't want to count, but a lot of things. Whereas in here, you do have to navigate through the menu system to do different things. So I have to go through all the software in here. And if I want to change something, I'm going to have to dig deep multiple levels into this to get to it. Whereas on here, I just have one touch access. So that's really what I'm talking about there. Um, it, again, it's you know, a bit of a misnomer because you do have control on here, but you have quicker access to things on the ATEM because there's so many buttons. On the same token, it's very easy to get confused on the ATEM. There's so many buttons. You're like, I have no idea where that button is. So, yeah, there's that as well. And then macros. So I touched on this a little bit earlier. There's no macro functionality on the Yolo box, but that is a core element of the ATEM lineup. This goes across all the ATEMs. The ability to, to automate certain things, load this camera angle, load this into preview, set up a dissolve that's a three second dissolve or a wipe or whatever, load that in, bring up a lower third graphic, all of that can be controlled via a single touch with a macro. That's something you could do on the ATEM, you can't do that on the YOLO box. And macros are immensely powerful. That's how I do a huge amount of what I do here. When you combine macros with the uh, companion layer, then you've just got total, complete and total control. It's really, really awesome. That's device control. Last one is external hardware. What do I even have here? Oh, controlling external hardware for recording and playback, i.e. a HyperDeck. So specifically about the HyperDeck, you can't do this with the Yellow Box, you can with the ATEM. So a HyperDeck is a recorder slash player, think of it like a VTR, that is, uh, is completely controllable from the ATEM itself. So I can do things like play a video file that's loaded on that from the ATEM. I can record the ATEM's output to that. I actually use, I don't have a camera pointing at it now, but I actually use a bank of six HyperDecks where I can record all the ISOs in 4K going into those HyperDecks. And I can control those from the ATEM. None of that exists on the Yellow Box at all. So it's just a whole other layer of hardware support. Again, it really is designed for Blackmagic hardware. Blackmagic obviously makes all this stuff, the ATEM and the HyperDecks and so on. You have a lot of control over external pieces. You don't have that on the, ATEM, on the Yellow Box.
And uh, this is the other cool one, the camera control. So this does require Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, but you have control over the exposure, the color balancing focus, the power zoom, if you have a power zoom lens on there and so on, all from either the hardware on here or the software on the ATEM software running on your computer. This is pretty cool stuff, the ability to control your cameras that way. That doesn't exist on the Yolo box at all. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything in there. That is the full comparison. Oh boy, that was a lot. That, uh, that took a while to get through. Mm.